following is a presentation of TFNN. The Global Market Pulse with your host, John Logan. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, John Logan. Hi guys, welcome back to the show. And of course, I'm showing the S&Ps on our chart. Apologize for missing yesterday. Got some things going on that we had to do on the program inside and had to pay attention to them for your sake. On the S&Ps, let's see where we're at here. So here's our weekly. And uh, we should have Steve Banger with us, who's actually on location here in North Carolina with me in just a bit, as soon as we get uh, the show started, which I think you guys are going to enjoy. Um, here's the weekly. Nothing really doing new here on the long term, but we kind of had the market come to us and are sitting at the top of a profile here on the daily, that 270.75 area, technically speaking. This is pretty ripe in an uptrend looking for a bounce here at this level we've come off what the highs the other day were 2400 so we've come back 30 points and are kind of consolidating around the daily unfair highs um it's tough to buy this up here for me but uh, again if you're just kind of turning the rents the same way and looking at what's in front of you as far as profiles go you've got to take a shot from the long side here um we were talking about the s p's possibly you know coming back down and getting a close below this 2075 or 2070 area to look at possibly exploring down to 2343 and that is yet to happen so again it's uh turn the rinse the same way and look for ultimately if we're going to be able to go short look for those closes below 20 2370 75. uh and i hope we can get steve on as soon as we can He's sitting over here pretty much next to me. Uh, let's take a look at crude. Here we go. Weekly and for high still hanging in there. 52, 43, 44 pre-market. And here's the situation on crude. You know, I, I still think you just got to look at this from the long side all the time. Block out the short side. Taking battles for support. Got some targets. 55.06 on that particular product let's take a look at the dollar so you know i haven't been super bullish on the dollar lately um here's the weekly really caught a good bounce off 99.63.64 and the dailies here we go on the dollar unfair highs at around let me just see where we're at on that 101.78 so you know what do you do with the dollar i actually a little bit more short-minded here um 180 would be a target down there right now at this moment you've got a great place to pick a battle in my opinion on the short side if the dollar comes off you guys know what happens to commodities in general in a default manner so that's kind of the way i'm looking at the dollar right now maybe exploring the fair auction not not a massive short opportunity to back the truck up situation but just an opportunity with a really good risk reward of about 100 pips on the dollar and uh, stops relatively tight above. Okay, I think we've got Steve. Steve, are you there? I'm here, if you are there, John. Yeah, I'm always here. How are you this morning? Well, I'm in Riley, North Carolina, in your area of the woods, so it's beautiful. Doesn't get yeah, any better. It's good to have you down here, man. Um, I know. So, uh, Steve's been here for a couple of days, and. Um, on site here and uh what we want to do today is just try to do the rest of the show talking about some topics that we had uh thought would be interesting to cover earlier and um steve what is on your mind this morning well i think the big one for today to watch out is uh, what healthcare stocks are going to do um just because we had the release of the republican version of the obamacare re uh, repeal come down <laughs> the pipeline so um presumably Healthcare stocks going to react to it in uh, in one way or the other. I mean, they might not, right? But at least it, it, it bears watching for the day. Right. Um, 
what uh, some of the healthcare stocks? I'm just I don't have our scanner up right now. I'm going to get it up after the break. But some of the healthcare stocks. Uh, I, I mean. I mean, there's a healthcare ETF. Um, the right. symbol uh, kind XLV. of XLV. Like, yes, uh, slipped my mind. Um, so I think that one bears watching. Then, of course, individual healthcare stocks too, right? Right. So I don't know if you're showing my screen, but technically, I mean, we've we've, God, we've really had a move here, huh? Um, so right now, um, technically speaking, and you may be seeing this on TFNN, you may not be seeing it, Steve. Uh, 75.93 unfair highs, and then you've got 73.88 below. We don't have to kind of back and fill all the way down there. Um, mm -hmm. And and again, what you know, what uh, where this? Let me just see if we got any prints this morning. Uh, I don't see anything printing yet this morning no. on this ETF. Yeah. yeah. So we'll have to see how this opens. Um, but did you have any any chances to look into the details of that uh, of what you just talked about earlier well I mean I looked I, I briefly glanced at it right I think the big one is going to be that um, rather than getting direct contributions and relief everybody depending upon age will basically receive a tax credit and then depending upon income of course but will receive right. a tax credit and the tax credit can actually be um, be be factored, meaning that you can get it prepaid, mm -hmm. so that you don't have to wait for the actual tax return to claim it, um, which effectively, I think, comes onto the same numbers numerically. I mean, at least in the ballpark, um, than what we have than what we have right now, but. I mean, obviously, healthcare stocks have had a pretty good run. I mean, they ran a good 10% over the past month, give or take it. And um, do you sell the news take a here? Profit, I mean, you might. You might. <laughs> if it doesn't break into new highs, you certainly have something to sell up here, right? Because you know exactly where your historical high is. I mean, 75, what? 90, 76. I mean, that's your point. Right. I don't see this printing on my screen, but Tom said that uh, UNH, like United Healthcare's, bid up about two dollars from <clears throat> yesterday's close. Right now, okay. so the S and P's, yeah, the S and P's are down four. So I mean, there's something going on there. And the uh, the XLV, I just want to restate some numbers to you, Steve. Um, you know, we're breaking out again above. If if you know this kind of develops in a UNH type way. Breaking out above 75, 93, 76 is, again, kind of breaking out of a profile again. But if we don't do that, you think it might be time to sell the news kind of situation on this? I'm actually thinking yes, myself. This thing's had a heck of a run. It did. It did. Uh, I mean, just hearing from Tom, because I don't have my, my, my home screen up, so I'm a little blind right now. But just right. hearing from Tom that Humana is up two dollars would indicate to me that the market is going to blow um, to the upside. Um, right. So you might have a situation where either the thing is going to go up or it reverses down intraday. If it then closes be below 75.90, the old historical high, you really have a sell right there. Yeah, I agree with that. Might be kind of a wait and see situation. Yeah. Let somebody else figure out the top. Guys, we'll be right back. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now you can get a two week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed has proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. 
Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno-Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. John takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And uh, we've got Steve Banger with us, I'm assuming, still. Steve, you there? I'm alive and kicking, yes. Great. It's good to know that. So we were finishing up uh, XLV, and um, really the – let me pull up the weekly here. Really the uh, the mindset of this trade, even though this, this thing's had a heck of a run, if if we don't you know, really kind of follow through and close about 70, 75.93, Steve, and maybe even reverse back down below it, then you might have, with all the great news out there and the action – you know, kind of happened afterwards. Uh, that would be a kind of a strong signal for a possible pullback in this um, ETF. Correct? Yes, I would agree. I mean, if the Me market too. pops high, if the market pops higher, and then can't hold the gains and actually closes below um, the historical high, the seventy five mm -hmm. ninety, to me that would be a sell. Yeah, there's there's a lot of what ifs in in that. You know, conversation we just had, um, and but that's the way you know trading is. You're looking for setups like this, and if that setup doesn't happen, the way we just yeah. talked about it. Yeah. Go ahead, Steve. Yes, you're right. Right. I mean, it's um, it's, it's a game of perceptions and opportunity. So, if it closes below 75.90 after higher opening, I believe you have an opportunity. Right. Right. So, um, let's look at a couple other things here. Um, I've got to look at target first, Steve. Yep, still down. Um, <laughs> uh, we we were gonna we were gonna talk about your trifecta, and uh, if you could expound on that a little bit, that would be awesome. And I'll try to fill in some holes. Yes. So just because we talked about yesterday, um, mm -hmm. and uh, we are kind of like shooting it back and forth, mm -hmm. I, I think what is important to realize is that we have kind of like trifecta of potential economic developments which would be rather transformative for the US economy and corporate earnings for potentially decades to come. I mean, I know that sounds like a big statement, but that's actually how I feel. And that trifecta of, uh, of news or developments um, is specifically corporate tax reform, um, which would be a significant boost to earnings and consequently uh, dividends, because dividend payouts would increase accordingly, which would push stocks higher on a long-term basis. 
Mm -hmm. The other thing is a long-term regulatory relief by Trump saying you have to kill two regulations for every new regulation you introduce. And that <laughs> over time will lead to a significant regulatory relief, not only for banks, and we talked about banks the last time, I'm still a fan of banks, but right. really for every business which will ultimately extend down to mom and pop businesses, which are going to have it much easier. And then um, the 800 pound gorilla in the room, I think, is the border adjustment tax and what it will do to the US economy. Well, at, that being said, um, risk reward scenarios, high reward opportunities, and the instruments that may offer those, got any thoughts on how to take advantage of what you just said? Well, I'm still a fan of the banks. Um, I think the banks are the ones who stand to benefit the most from an uptick in interest rates and from regulatory, uh, regulatory relief. And vis-a-vis -vis where they are um, mm -hmm. in their valuations, I think the banks have a lot, uh, a lot of uh, runway ahead of them. Uh, ahead of them, um, retailers still, I think, are um, vulnerable even at those levels. Wow. In particular, when the board adjustment tax hits, because at least initially, it's going to make things a little bit more expensive, which should theoretically um, be a drag on consumption, which would then be bad for retailers. Got it. And, um, you know, I'm looking at the 30-year right now. I don't know if you see my screen on, uh, I don't know if you're able to access the uh, TFN show over there on, on your terminal. By the way, I'm in the background of Steve, if anybody can see that. Um, the 30-year, uh, the other day we talked about, you know, this this thing coming down to uh, you know, Custer's last stance here around 148.29. It did a little bit of a empathetic bounce off that area and caught this 149.29, which was literally the unfair low of the daily to the tick. Actually, we reached 149.30. And now we've kind of settled back again. So the action on the 30 year, pretty much in the 10 years, to kind of race down to these unfair lows on the weekly profiles and actually now consolidate and hang around there. Um, and this continue, This is kind of a possible continuation kind of feel here to it. And that widening yield curve, like you said, you know, the banks are kind of looking for that. They, I mean, have they already priced a lot of this in? Or do you think every time, if we have a break in treasuries, you know, the, the banks are just going to fly again? I mean... Um, I, I I wouldn't necessarily tie it uh, like on a one-to-one -one basis to the treasuries. Um, I think it's more like a general uh, scenario whereby right. banks, I feel, should be bought on weakness vis-a-vis -vis everything with, which is going on in the market. Mm -hmm. But theoretically, the net interest margin for banks is going to increase from here on out. And uh, since the net interest margin is on some level defined what was gone in the treasury market, Yes, I mean, the, the moment treasury uh, treasuries dip in price, theoretically, banks should go up. I mean, might not be one-to-one, -one, but yeah, I mean, that's that's the theory here. Right. Um, and where does, in your mind, um, I'm pulling up gold here right now. You know, gold kind of broke and closed last week below this 1236 area. That was a really good... Had a nice little bounce there, and then uh, you know you you got to be able to take your medicine and and kind of walk away from a trade once we have a a stake in the ground, especially on the long term, a technical change here. So we've closed last week below 1236. We went back this week and kind of touched it, uh, just kind of rallying back up to that former support now resistance. We rallied up this week to 1237. So 1236 support broken, close blow, go back and touch. And th this is one of those kind of dive into the profile trades that, that you like. Now that that has happened, um, I like them too, by the way, Steve. <laughs> now, now that that's happened, um, you know, uh, does gold, you know, continue to drift here downward or like, or do you just kind of pass on the short now and just try to still wait for long opportunities? I mean, I, I've, I'm kind of mixed up here. To be honest well, with you. so last weekend when I was on, uh, I think it was on the 28th of February, so about a week ago, mm -hmm. we had a call on the show, and we were talking a little bit about gold. And what the call basically pointed out, um, and I'm paraphrasing now, 
was that he said, well, why is gold going up? Well, the dollar is getting stronger, and we are in an environment where gold should be getting weaker, because um, with interest rates rising, at least on the surface, that should be bad news for gold. And nevertheless, over the past two, two and a half months, gold has consistently been going up, um, and we are now a solid, let's say, 10% or so from the lows we had three months ago. Mm -hmm. And Gold is a tricky animal right now, I feel, because... Yeah, I don't see any edge. Almost, well, I mean, it almost signals like inflation's around the corner, and despite interest rates coming down the pipeline, gold is strong. So it will be really interesting to see how gold is going to react to the next interest rate hike. It should go down, but I have that strong suspicion that it actually may bottom out with the hike and then go higher. That's what, that's what it looks like. All right, guys, well, I'll tell you what, we're going to pick this up when we come back after break. Stay tuned. TFNN has just launched a special event in Tampa with Tom O'Brien taking place March 18th, sponsored by Nadex. Tom O'Brien will be presenting two workshops for a combined two and a half hours of education, bisecting and dissecting his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. March 18th kicks off with a continental breakfast as we get everyone checked in, and that is followed by two 75-minute workshops with Tom O'Brien. The first workshop from 8.45 until 10 a.m. will cover quality volume cause and effect and abc structures and the second workshop from 10 15 until 11 30 a.m will cover swing points testing and the tiger gartley tom will then wrap things up with a question and answer session which will be followed by a tiger luncheon social on the rooftop of the westin hotel the best part is that it's all free but you must register to attend visit the front page of tfnn.com for all the details and to sign up today and we hope to see you in tampa on march 18th if you'll look to unearth a new financial resource and diversify your financial portfolio, consider the new market safe core commodity CD from Everbank. This five year US dollar denominated CD gives you exposure to four equally weighted commodities gold, copper, WTI oil, and sugar in one powerful CD. With no pricing caps, you can potentially earn an unlimited upside payment at maturity if the commodities increase in value across semi annual pricing dates. And should the opposite occur, your principal is 100% protected. Keep in mind, returns are based on CD performance, there's no annual percentage yield or periodic rate of interest on this index CD. Don't miss out. With certain commodities on the rebound, now is the time to take advantage. The March 23rd funding deadline will be here before you know it. So call 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN for the CD's term sheet and other important product details and disclosures. Once more, that's 1-855-750-4051 or visit everbank.com slash TFNN. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. Until recently, it was almost impossible for the average investor to hedge against currency risk in Europe or Japan. For a bold trade on Europe or Japan that protects against moves in currency, trade HEGE -E or HEGJ, two times currency hedged leveraged ETFs from Direction Investments. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. And we've got Steve Banger with us all hour here. He's down in North Carolina with me today. Um, Steve, I wanted to kind of revisit something you said earlier, which I haven't really yet figured out what's the trade on this um, or the ramifications either way. But you mentioned something about a border tax 
and that being somewhat of the 800 pound gorilla in the room and you actually had some positive feelings on that i thought earlier um but i'd like i'd love for you to just kind of talk about that because i think that's gonna that's gonna be uh something that people are looking at significantly especially when it comes to you know corporations and uh, how that kind of revolves around those guys so yes um so, so, so just to recap, the border adjustment tax is a tax which um, Trump wants, wants to charge on the border on, on imports into the United States. And what is important to realize in that context is that pretty much every OECD country but the U.S. has a value-added tax, which we do not have. And a value-added yeah, that, tax... That's amazing. If somebody's ever been over... I mean, you've... You've been all over the place, Steve. I mean, like, you know, if I go to Costa Rica and try to buy a car there, it's like 40% more, you know, the same yeah. car. And, yeah. and and we just don't have those barriers coming into this country at all. And um, unless you've traveled, you really can't really get your head wrapped around that. And, you know, even in the Philippines, you know, it's, it's borderline kind of third worldish in a lot of places. And, um, but then when you go to try to buy something made in the United States, like I can't, I mean, they don't allow you to order anything off Amazon there. You know what I mean? Because they can't control it like they want to and, and, and whack people hard enough. So, uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Just wanted to throw that in. Yeah, no, that's right. I mean, uh, you, you are kind of like making the point. So, so pretty much every OECD country, but the U S I think there's one other country. Um, but which one is it's kind of like escapes me right now. Uh, charges a value-added tax. Obviously, the U.S. doesn't for a lot of reasons, but the net effect of a value-added tax is that if I want to import goods into another country, that mm -hmm. country will um, make my goods by about 15 or 20 percent more expensive at the point of entry. And the importer of the goods has the ability to reclaim that VAT when he sells it to a consumer. So because of the way the VAT works is that it effectively makes the import of American goods by the amount of the VAT more expensive, whereas when a local company in that foreign country um, is able to resell those goods, they're able to reclaim the money. So. What, what happens because of it is um, are, are two things. First of all, um, the American corporation, which does not have a, a represent, uh, an office or a subsidiary in another country, is unable to reclaim that VAT amount. So it's being paid, it decreases profit margins, and it just makes the goods more expensive. Because of it, two things happen. First of all, the American company is not as competitive because of the VAT as it should be. And if the American company has significant business interests in that other country, it will reach that point where they say, okay, we have to set up an actual subsidiary in that country to take advantage of the VAT. And because of it, that whole thing plays into exactly what Trump has been saying all along. And I mean, you can argue with him for whatever reason, but he is right. Well, he's a business guy. He lives. He he lives and breathes this on a daily basis because yeah. he's got international, you know, yeah. deals You're going right. on. You're right. So, so what 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 he's putting the finger on is uh, are those two things. He says, first of all, because we don't have a VAT, um, we're going to lose jobs to those countries because American corporations are effectively being forced to set up subsidiaries overseas so that, that they circumvent the VAT tax disadvantage. Right. And we are suppressing our imports because a lot of companies are just not competitive on the international market. And the border adjustment tax would kind of eliminate all of those issues because it would function as a VAT, but just on the outside to the rest of the world because for right. political reasons you cannot institute a VAT on any reasonable level within the United States to level the playing field. So, so he's saying, okay, we are not going to do a VAT, we're going to do a border adjustment tax to kind of like kill both birds with one stone. And um, if he gets that done, I think the ramifications to the US economy long term are going to be huge. It will really put a cramp into anybody wanting to export jobs overseas. 
and it's going to make our exports much more competitive. And that would be a huge thing long term. What about service companies? Um, not just somebody manufacturing, but like, what, do you, what are your thoughts on service type deals? Well, like, well, service, for instance, call centers or whatever, you know. Yeah, services are usually excluded from the VAT, right? It's a consumption. Got tax. it. Yeah, yeah. Good. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so, 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 so. And, and I, I was just thing. notified that, that we're getting so excited um, that your, your camera is shaking over there. I think that um, you were pounding the desk about what you were saying <laughs> earlier. So they, they said, hey, tell Steve to stop getting so excited over there. Um, but it is something exciting. You know, I mean, it, th these are like sea change events going on. Yes. That should have already happened. That a real business guy, and again, Trump's yep. got his right. positives and negatives. You know, I mean, everybody's got that. But uh, um, that's a whole nother show. But you know, if if a if a guy that runs a business gets in there, and you know, the the biggest problem with our debt, in my opinion, and everybody listening to this show probably feels the same way. It's just our country's really not run optimally. Um, you know, as far as plug and holes, like you're talking about with this one, normalizing some things. And actually, you know, uh, I'm sure that at some point, you know, people in the government are going to really be held accountable for their own departments and, you know, waste and spending and things like that. And, you know, all these things kind of make our debt. You know, the only thing I, I don't think that, <laughs> you know, Trump kind of ran on our unemployment figures. Like, what do you feel about this? This is a good question for you. Our unemployment figures are bogus, basically. You know, I mean, it's totally calculated wrong. I mean, if you really want to know what true unemployment is or full unemployment or things like that, do you think that now he'll just – that's so such a scary number to kind of uncover. Do you think that he'll kind of leave that alone because it will be too much of a shock? Or do you think if he readjusts a number like that to what it you know, mathematically truly is – Everybody already kind of knows that, and they'll just look at it as a different calculation to kind of bank off of in the future. Or do you, what do you think about that? So I, I guess you are alluding to the fact that he repeatedly stated that the real unemployment rate within the U.S. of A is somewhere around whatever twenty-five percent, something like that. Yes, <laughs> and that's a little and, different than five. Yeah, I mean, obviously. There are a lot of people who don't have a job, but I happen to have a lot of friends who don't have a job because they don't want a job. Right. And those people, I think, are part of the 25% um, Trump is quoting. And, and like in my case, I have a lot of friends who don't have to work as you have done, or at least right. not in a conventional manner. So they are part of the 25%, but I don't even know where to start with that. I mean, the yardstick has to maintain, has to be the same. A yard has to be yard. They can't right. just like, arbitrarily change things. That's important. Right. Guys, we'll be right back. Has the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. 
Using this first-of-its-kind program, the Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry Larry sends out, and throughout the week when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, 6 videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Stay away from my left hook. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back. We've got Steve Banger on site here in North Carolina. Um, Steve, you know one of the things that uh, great, you know, discourse on the on the uh, the border tax situation. But you know, as a trader, like I mean, everybody listening to this show is like, well, how do I make money off of that? Um, sure. So, you know, what uh, are, you know, instead of trying to get long the U.S. markets or you know all these adjustments that are going to have to happen corporately, I mean that's a big deal. And um, you know, do you just go in and sh take select overseas markets that are going to be completely affected by that because you kind of feel like that's going to happen? Do you just short certain indices or you know try to find um, companies that? You, you can kind of trade like you know in some broker networks just kind of pick out some things that will be massively affected by this and like how do you make money off of it in your opinion so so let's talk about the countries uh, which are going to be mostly affected by the border adjustment tax if and when it comes okay. um, number one is china our trade deficit with china is about 347 billion dollars um per year Mm -hmm. And then um, number two, three, and four are uh, Japan, Germany, and Mexico. Um, and all of, the, all of the last three months are about like the 64, 65 billion dollar mark. Mm -hmm. So the trade really is twofold. Either you're going to start selling stocks if and when the board adjustments uh, tax is going to hit. And I think the Chinese market is would be very um, subject to a correction if that is going to come through. Or you sell mm -hmm. currency. Um, I was going to ask I, about the currencies, yeah. Yeah, and I think the, 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 China, uh, the Chinese rubini is not really free-flowed. Free um, Germany is just part of the euro, so that's you're really trading a bigger basket there. So mm -hmm. on the currency side, I think the Japanese yen would be the prime candidate to sell. So I think if you really want you to say to, that... To, to get devalued, you mean? Yes. Right. Would. Okay. Right. So, um, so on the currency side, I think you want to you, you want to trade the yen, um, and on the stock side, I think you have Japanese stocks and uh, and Chinese stocks to sell. Right. Okay. So let's 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 look at the yen right now. So the devaluation of the yen will be this particular chart going up, and I've got the uh, JPY USD cross here on uh, e signal and. Yeah, I wasn't so excited about buying the bounce here in the yen or the dollar. I mean, if you, if you can notice, I mean, the yen really tested this number twice down below, 111, 67, 68. I mean, tested it great. That was kind of the back-the-truck-up moment there. 
and then uh, hit the POC in a wide profile. This is a great example of paying attention to POCs, the blue line, which is all in the scanner, by the way, um, and, uh, and using that as a target-rich environment for long-term trade. So now uh, it looks like we might want to retest that POC at 115 and some change up there, and, and we've, we're kind of basing above these daily balanced areas. So, you know, what Steve's saying, it's it's a long-term kind of view. You don't know when or if and when that would develop out, um, but these are things to keep in mind, and it might keep a bid in the end just based on that kind of fear trade going on uh, anyway, right? Steve, I mean that you don't want this could be one where it, you know gaps up a thousand pips all of a sudden, right? Yeah, I mean it's honestly I believe if the board adjustment tax comes in like moves from the uh, from the potential to the likely um, suddenly, I think you're going to see a very rapid adjustment in currencies. Right. And therefore the dollar would fly, I'm, I'm assuming in your yeah, mind. I mean it's yeah, I mean I mean, that's the idea, right, that over time, right. um, currency is going to be revalued so that the inflationary component, which the one-time adjustment in price is because of the board adjustment tax would bring, would be um, eliminated because we are just going to get more for our dollars. So we have to spend less dollars in order to buy Japanese goods. But I mean... It, if you really think about it, right, does it make any sense that I can buy a BMW here in the U.S. for less money than it would cost me in Germany? <laughs> yeah, right? I, was, I was always trying to figure that out, you know. Right? I mean, so, so, yeah. I mean, it's so simple or it's so obvious, but I mean, so it would be huge. I mean, I'm not, yeah. I'm not all for saying BMW should be more ten percent more expensive, but. How is it that I can buy a BMW fully loaded for less money in the U.S. Um, after they assemble it in Germany, put it on a boat, ship it over, unload it, drive it to my dealership, then what I pay for the car in Germany? It's crazy. Right? Maybe it, maybe it's a write-off. I'm no, just kidding. I mean, um, I mean, everything, everything's a write-off nowadays. Yeah, I had to figure that part out. Hey, well, you know, he, I got to tell you. a master of that, actually. The, the <laughs> um I got to tell you, um, your argument is so compelling. I've watched the yen actually become devalued as you're speaking about this, and maybe right. you're moving the market right now. Um, this is this is broadcast in quite a few places, so um, yeah, together, John. There's a feasting of bids out there. Actually, it's I'm looking at it. It's actually gone up. Uh, I think like five or actually quite a few pips since you've been talking. Powerful speech there. Um, okay, so let's go, you know, you're from Germany originally, um, you go back there quite often. The, uh, the British pound, I know that, that you know, that's kind of wrapped up in the Euro, Germany, of, of course, but the British pound, um, right now has kind of meandered back down into a precipice of bounce time or, or just kind of cave in time and a weekly close obviously is going to be pretty serious here for this product right now but 121.45 weekly unfair lows we're right there right now yeah. do you think uh i mean what's what's happening here and um i mean the pound is a problem child um there's no question about it i mean they it's self-inflicted because mm -hmm. of the decision to leave the european union um and things might get awfully complicated over there if and when Scotland is going to hold a referendum um, whether or not to leave the United Kingdom. So I don't see any scenario in, in which the pound can catch a bit. And any even short-term rally in the pound, I feel, should be sold. I don't think that currency is going to... I think the currency has further room to, 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 to drop, to fall. Wow. Well, we had um, uh, a really smart person, uh, John from Philadelphia, that uh, really called a little bit of a bounce reversal on the pound down when I was concerned that it was going to do what you're talking about it's about two and a half months, two months ago, two and a half months ago. And uh, it actually caught a pretty good bounce for about 
eh, five or six hundred pips almost, but it it kind of did that key reversal back in the box up there, like uh, you know, uh, I don't know if you're seeing my screen right now, but did that kind of back in the box, went back and retested those on for highs. I wasn't so sure about you know what was going to happen with the pound, so I was kind of passing on it. But coming back down to these lows, it's obviously at a precipice, like I said, of of a possibility of a flush here again. Um, so I would personally be hesitant on buying this again. I kind of missed the rally before, but uh, I, I'm kind of feeling the same way you are. There's so many unknowns. Why would you take any shots on it right now? You know, yep. guys, we'll be right back. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Larry Pesavento, a 40-year veteran trader. He uses pattern recognition, Gartley's, Butterflies, ABC's, and Fibonacci in order to trade these markets. Trade what you see, next on TFNN. Hi, guys. Welcome back to the show. We've got about three or four minutes here left. Steve Banger's been with us the whole hour. Um... So, Steve, uh, so I think we're both in agreement on the pound there. Um, let's take a look at the uh, Chinese currency right now. And technically, you probably got a little delay on your screen. Um, I do. Because I usually say a lot of weird things that they have to temper before they broadcast right. it live. They, they've put okay. me specifically on a longer delay than everybody else. Okay. Um, so yeah. here's what's going on with the CNY USD on a, on a daily here. So all things considered, what you were saying before, um, 
you'd expect this thing to actually the chart to rise, which would be the devaluation. Um, because at one point China would go, oh, wow, you're going to do that? Okay, wow, we're going to do this. I mean, well, I mean, China has, uh, first of all, China cannot really, it's not a free floating currency, right? Right. Um, right. So you really have very limited ability to really um, benefit from, from, a, from anything in the Chinese Rimbini um, to trade. So I don't really think there's a viable trade in there, but you're right. Yes, I mean, um, China will have to revalue their currency potentially, um, but China has also been battling um, capital flows for quite some time now. A lot of money has fled their country over the past, um, let's say, two years. So um, they have to be considered all those things. I mean, for, uh, Chinese, go ahead. It seems like to me that just the impending possibility of all these currency gyrations. You know, when does that kind of start hitting home with, you know, guys that are people or institutions that are invested in U.S. companies? I mean, like, wouldn't there be a short-term, like, volatility spike at bare minimum just if this becomes even a real case scenario? Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's the board. So once again, I believe a lot of it depends on the board adjustment tax because that is the singular event which would really upend trade flows or impair trade, uh, trade flows dramatically. So if the board adjustment tax moves from, moves from the realm of the uh, possible to the likely, that is when you're going to see a move. When do you, I mean, is, is there any mention about when anything would even get introduced to Congress on that? Yeah, I mean, so uh, Ryan, uh, Speaker of the House, um, has spoken out in favor of a border adjustment tax. Mm -hmm. um, Republican senators, for the most part, have not been so f such, uh, so f uh, so big fans of, the, of it. Um, Trump is obviously a fan, so yep. I, I think the Senate has to be watched whether or not it can be pushed through. But the funny thing is, the border adjustment tax is good for the American, let's call it blue-collar worker. Right. Um, so you might actually get a couple of Democrats to vote for it. So. There's going to be one-time inflationary adjustment to the system um, when it gets instituted, but the benefits over time can be so huge that I think a couple of Rep uh, Democratic senators who would ordinarily not vote Republican on anything mm -hmm. might actually go for it, like blue states, uh, blue right. state, um, blue color states. Especially that, yeah. Especially the states that, that uh, were completely lost. Uh, in the election, you're right. You're right about that. I mean, it's it's a big thing. They got to so, try something new. They 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 can't necessarily, uh, you know, be the be the combative, uh, you know, uh, congressman. I'm telling you, well, if honestly, if if I would be in charge of a union and would listen to Trump talk about a border adjustment tax, that would be music in my ears. I would be all over it. that thing. Steve, thanks for coming on the show today. Thanks for being down Thank here. Got, great. Guys, stay tuned for Larry and uh, the rest of the hosts on TFNM. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.